Hi there, Virgos. Welcome to your April 2018 tarot reading. So before we go into the reading, I just want to apologize to you guys for not being able to get the videos out on time for you guys since the month of January. And it is just, you know, there's no um, excuses, okay? It's just really poor planning from my end. And um, I'm really, really appreciative of those of you who have, you know, inquired to see if I was okay and things like that. And for those of you who are still sticking around, I really, really, really appreciate your sub subscriptions and your support. And um, um, I started a new job. I was in a new city and things just kind of piled up on me. And um, I was constantly trying to get ahead, but... Um, it didn't work out that way. So work is um, a little bit, you know, more stable right now. And I'm hoping to be able to get these out for you consistently and especially early, if possible, um, from now to the rest of the year. Okay, so I promise I will try my very hardest to get these out on time. So thank you for still sticking around and for, um, you know, continue to subscribe to my channel. And thank you for being here watching this video. Um, the way that I started doing these videos is that I'm going to do the voice recording mainly because if I'm not looking at the screen and showing cards, it's just a little bit easier for me to extract more messages from the cards and to also look at the cards and, um, you know, find like a common narrative, a common theme. So I feel like the reading is more in depth because of it. So I'm trying to use this reading and also energetically, it's a lot easier for me. So without further ado, let's go to your reading. I'm just going to, you know, uh, say whatever is coming out as I see it, okay? So overall, the month of April is going to be a very, very smooth month. And uh, trust me, I don't say this, you know, um, often mainly because Mercury is your ruling planet. And when Mercury goes into retrograde, a lot of things go awry, right? A lot, a lot of communication goes awry. Technology that we depend on for, for work, goes awry. Things that we just rely on or have taken for granted, they don't, you know, happen or they don't, um, we can no longer rely on them. We can't take them for granted. And that's when we're reminded that we need to be, you know, extra vigilant, extra careful. And so Mercury retrogrades in the past have never been pleasant times for Virgos and Geminis. However, I feel like there's a big energetic shift happening for you guys and I feel like it's affecting more of the people around you rather than affecting you and I feel like you know you guys are very perfectionistic to begin with so you guys always you know cross your t's and dot your i's you're you always take that extra step to ensure the quality of your work and to not be reliant on other people and to not be reliant on things. And I feel like over the years, especially, you know, the past few years, you have learned to be a lot more flexible and a lot more adaptable. So I don't see this um, Mercury retrograde period affecting you too badly. I don't see it being, you know, major obstacles thrown in your way. Um, I feel like it's happening to other people around you rather than to you, okay, which is, um, it's not a, a bad thing at all, um, so what I'm seeing right off the bat, your, um, uh, work situation is really, really beautiful, um, finances, it's, it's plentiful, so that means money's coming in, you're able to save quite a bit of money, you're saving money, you're able to offer money to family members who might be in need, Okay, they're not reaching out to you for help. They're not saying, can I borrow this? Can I have this? Can you help me pay for this? They're not doing that at all. And I feel like because of it, you know, you've got some considerate, um, selfless family members. They're not selfish. They're not taking advantage of it. They're not soliciting you for things just because you have uh, financial prosperity. I feel like they're not, you know, um, they're, they, they might need help. They might need assistance. Uh, and I see you offering of your own volition, okay? Um, I see it coming to siblings. I see it coming to um, uh, in-laws, in-laws for your, your significant other, okay? Their parents who might have, um, I see some people losing houses. 
So they, they need, you know, support, they need finances to um, weather a really tough financial situation. So I see you offering assistance to house people, to provide, you know, temporary shelter, temporary relief for other people, or to even invite them into your household and then you're like helping them with the rent, helping them with food, etc. Um, I'm also seeing some of you like offering assistance to just uh, family members. So it's, it's a really beautiful energy. It lets me know that financially you're in a really, really good space. And financially you're able to save, you have disposable income, you have savings, you're accumulating wealth. Okay, so it's a really, really good energy here. Um, I see you, for some of you, you have a power couple dynamic where you are dating somebody that is also on par with you for really, really, you know, high income generating potential. So like the two of you, it's like you combine your finances or your joint finances is through the roof. So there's a lot of um, um, disposable income I see coming in the household. And so you're starting to save up for your children's future. You're starting to, you know, even put aside a trust fund put aside like a college fund, put aside savings for potentially uh, children that you're going to have um, for even, you know, before you even think about family planning. So it looks really good. Um, I'm also seeing some of you, um, you might be with a relationship partner that is in school, okay? And so they're, they're like really distracted. They have too many things in front of them they, they they bite off more than they can chew and they're just like stressed out they're frazzled they're like gaining weight um i know like you know when we love somebody we don't care about these things but for some reason i feel like you notice it and you know it's not that you're noticing it and, and you're no longer attracted to them i don't feel that but you notice a lot of these subtle things they can put on like a pound and you would notice they could eat more and you would notice so i don't know if that came out so i just have to say it because i, I think it's kind of funny because you guys are really really sensitive when it comes to your own weight as well your own body image and you're a little bit self-conscious and so when you gain weight or when other people gain weight you notice it and you know you're really polite you don't say it and you don't you know draw attention to it you don't want to embarrass the other person and you yourself would feel very embarrassed if someone brought it up but i feel like your partner uh they're stressed out they might be going to school they might be working they might be taking an extra course and they're a little bit stressed out um be sympathetic i feel like taking the time to cook properly for your partner might be better okay than anything else that you can do Mainly because I feel like they're stressed out. They're reaching for the nearest um, piece of snacks. And they're not getting, you know, healthy nutrients in their body. Um, so just something to think about. Um, I'm also sensing as well for some of you, especially parents, new parents. If you have a baby in the picture, um, there is also a sense here of, you know, just like familial bliss, okay? Like... Um, it's almost like for the first time you're thinking about and, and and not so much the first time but like as a unit so whoever your partner is for the first time the two of you are really obsessively saving up um for the the child's future so for those of you who are new parents you're in a really really good space you're thinking about you know five years you're thinking about college you're thinking about like um what if the, the child wants to go to school out of state or out of the country? We need to save up. We need to put in that college fund, which is really nice. It's, um, it's, it's really beautiful, actually. So either way, finances are going really well. In your work sector, Virgos, you have this second win. Like you're really, really motivated. And for whatever reason, and here's the thing, um, you know, like Mercury retrogrades tends to bring muddled energy. But I don't see this happening for you guys. I see major, major revelations and major breakthroughs. I see you being able to absorb information like a sponge. And I feel for the month of April, there will be a lot of those uh, epiphanies, breakthrough moments where things start to click and things start to make sense. 
you are not a sign that walks around confused and, and muddled and just you know、uh, scattered like a Gemini. You're you're not like that. But I feel like there might have been a few things that, in the back of your mind, you're just like, I'm not 100% sure on that, or I'm not really clear about you know how the connection is made or how it progresses. So this is the month where you're going to be able to get really, really immense breakthroughs. I also see you working in really close proximity to other people to teach them, to guide them, to provide assistance. I'm seeing many of you in an environment where there is a tremendous use of technology, different systems, different operating systems, different you know types of computers,、um, different like program software,、um, just a bunch of different techy things, and people around you. I, I see coding. I see coding. I also see like.、Um, Evaluation and data analysis. So it's like a stream of data that makes no sense whatsoever. And、uh, coworkers are really confused, and they're coming to you, and they're like, "What the hell is this?" And you're you're telling them, you know, this is where it goes, and you're explaining to them, and you're like talking all the time and teaching them, and you know, showing them how to do things. So you can't really show somebody unless you know something in depth. So I feel like it's an opportunity for you to show off a little bit. I also see some of you have a, a coworker that you're trying to. I don't know if you like them, like have a crush on them, or you're a little bit like、um, kind of like a, there's a little bit of a rivalry with them. But you're you're showing off your skills a little bit just to get their attention. So I don't know if it's because like there's a crush, or if it's because there's like a. Unspoken rivalry, like you, you guys are like competitive.、Um, it's like a friendly competition, okay? And you're trying to kind of、um, one up them. So you have an opportunity to do that. So overall, communication is going really well. Work,、um, being able to do your work, being able to you know garner money for it, it's it's really good.、Um, those of you working on contract basis, I feel like if you have fulfilled your end of the bargain when it comes to contracts. You're getting your financial dues. If you have finalized contracts, or you know you're working on commission、uh, on a commission basis, you're getting the commission checks. You're getting your royalty fees. So there's a lot of financial prosperity to be had for this month. And、um, in the career sector, I'm seeing for some of you,、um, I'm seeing here a water sign:、uh, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Somebody who might not be biologically young, but their energy is very, very young,、um, kind of insecure, needs a lot of handholding, needs a lot of、uh, guidance, is a little bit attention seeking, and、um, be patient. Okay, you're not a warm, fuzzy, like fuzzy, emotional type of a sign. Okay, you like to be of help to people. You like conversation to have like a purpose. But this person, they like to kind of、um, shoot the breeze. They like to just、um, do things in their own time. They they don't see. It's almost like there isn't a strong sense of urgency with anything that they do. They're gonna do things at their own time, at their own pace. And I feel like you don't operate that way. So you feel like this person is a little bit lazy. You feel like this person is a little bit entitled, okay? And so, be careful about you know harsh words being exchanged or directed towards that person because、um, they seem to me like they're very young. They have a lot of grown up to do, so there's no need to be harsh, okay? So that's my only warning.、Um, there is a lot of talks about property. Property overseas, property that you own, property that family members own. What to do with the property?、Um, how to transfer it? How to fix it? And how to、um, fortify it? Okay. So I, I see this hole. It's like a hole in the wall, and I see like things getting through. So I don't know if it's like、um, cockroaches, rats, God forbid,、um, but like. Something's getting through. Water, sewage,、um, 
ant. So it's like a, a hole, like a crack in the wall. And stuff is getting through. And you're trying to find ways to patch it up. You're trying to um, decide, do I hire contractors or is this something I can do on my own? Um, I feel like it's property related. It could also be property overseas, property that belongs to other people and they're having problems and you're trying to help them. So there's generally lots of discussions about that. Um, I'm also sensing as well, in the relationship sector. So let's talk about the relationship. Uh, your partner, once again, is dealing with a lot of stuff. And so if you are living with a partner, um, this is the month where you're gonna have to do a lot of, you know, do it yourself things, okay? Possibly uh, your partner's too busy so, and you wanna eat out, so you're gonna have to go to a restaurant and just, you know, sit there and just, just do it on your own, which is fine. And then I also feel like uh, do-it-yourself projects um, with this home repairs, your partner might be too busy. And so you're going to have to pick up the slack and you're going to have to do a lot of these things yourself. And I feel like it's a, it's a new territory for many of you. It's like your partner might have been the fixer, might have been the handyman or the handy woman. And now it's like a role reversal, mainly because they're busy, they're busy with school, they're busy with life, they're busy with other things, and you're going to have to kind of switch roles. And then I'm also seeing as well fathers, and I know um, this is not, you know, this is just a, what I perceive to be the standard um, gender division of labor. Um, for example, if you, you might need to, you know, do the, um, the cooking, do the cleaning, do the child care, changing diapers, um, bathing the kids, mainly because your partner is um, too inundated with their own responsibility. So I do see some switcheroo when it comes to, you know, the traditional gender division of labor, okay? And um, that's coming in. And I know we're going to get into, you know, debates with same-sex marriages, but I feel like whatever you were, whatever responsibilities your partner did, you're going to have to do, like, uh, what they're doing, mainly because they're too busy, so you're stepping up, you're helping out. And uh, there's a lot of things that you're getting your um, feet wet in, so new territory, which is great because you're going to be learning new things. And then I'm also seeing like new projects that you're you're going online, you're researching DIY projects, do it yourself projects, and you're trying to get it in order. Some of them might not work out too well, but you have opportunities to learn from them, and I'm sure you figure it out in no time, Virgos. So I see some really great things happening here when you're keeping yourself busy, okay? Um, let me see if there's anything coming through. I feel like they keep mentioning home property situation. Even if you're renting, I feel like there's something in the home that requires some fixing and a handy person or like a maintenance person is going to need to come in and look at things, okay? And I also feel like they might need to hire a specialist that you have to pay out of pocket. So there's something coming in here. Get it fixed, okay? I know that Mercury retrograde is not a good time to get things fixed, but Mercury retrograde is also a notorious time where these sore spots, these problems uh, um, come out into the open so that they can be looked at, so that they can be brought to light, so that they can be, you know... Um, shown so that you can get them fixed sooner or later okay if you can wait if it's something that's not too you know life-threatening or too um severe you should wait until after the mercury retrograde period before you get them fixed so if it's a vehicle for example don't buy vehicles don't buy new cars don't get cars fixed wait until the um after that that cycle when people can properly diagnose things when they're a little bit more careful okay and then if it's something you definitely can delay with the house uh repairs definitely wait until the end of the april time frame with mercury um indirect that's when it's a safer time to you know hire the right people and have things fixed the right way I'm seeing as well, um, there are major, um, it's almost like some of you are 
really saving up and you're trying to get yourself into a different housing situation. So you're trying to, you know, feel things out just to see like, do we have enough money for this neighborhood? Do we have money, enough money to settle here, to rent here, to relocate here and there? So there are a lot of like talks about geographical relocation, geographical changes, geographical moves. And I feel like financially, um, you're really on top of your career field. So it's almost like I see some of you are mid-level career professionals or high-level career professionals. Like you're making quite a bit of money. You have a lot of skills under your belt and you can, you're very competitive in the job market. So you can relocate and very quickly find a job. So you're in one of those really technical jobs where your skills are highly desirable. And um, I don't see it's like, um, I, I see you getting paid quite a bit of money, okay? And so if you were to relocate, you know it's just a matter of time before you find a job that pays just as well, if not even better. So you're not really concerned about, you know, the, the work prospects itself. Whereas a few years ago, this wasn't the case, but now you're really, really in high demand. And so relocating and moving to a different location is really not a problem for you. But for new parents, you're also thinking about childcare. You're thinking about, you know, mom and dad and whether or not they're available to be uh, emergency, you know, babysitters as well. And you don't want to settle too far away. So there's some trepidation here, but I definitely see some serious um, uh, thoughts, uh, plans about, you know, relocation. I especially see this um, in the we are in in the uh, June time frame. So the June time frame, these discussions are going to bear fruit. They're going to come back up, and I feel like many of you are deciding, you know, making serious plans to relocate, to move, to you know, give it uh, some serious thought, and working, planning it so that it actually happens. So. This is a really good year for you guys if you're thinking about, you know, making some major strides. You're highly supported and I definitely feel like the timing to do that is on uh, June and the July time frame, okay? You have some really, really strong divine blessings coming through. And Virgos, um, I'm seeing here this, this open hand message. So it's like um, the, the hand, it's like always giving a helping hand always willing to assist other people. And um, I feel like this is, you know, ultimately the representation of you, where you guys represent the sign of uh, service to humanity, like the Aquarian people, but with Aquarius, it's more like sharing what they know, sharing ideas, sharing uh, philosophies, sharing knowledge. With you guys, this open hand basically means you're always willing to assist you don't care who it is. If they need help, you step in. And I've seen a lot of Virgos at work where they're they're very great team players. They don't have that sense about, you know, hoarding knowledge and um, getting the upper hand and, you know, um, getting the promotion and, and, and just, you know, being selfish with what they know. Um, I feel like in the work environment, you do it because it's the right thing to do. Because you believe that if we all have the same knowledge, if we all are on the same page, we can be extra productive and it's good for the company, it's good for the supervisor, everybody's happy, everybody's on the same page. So you have this team player, team spirit about you. That is really admirable and it's very understated. And so I feel like your whole life, your whole professional career is about helping people. Some of you could physically be in the helping profession, nursing, counseling, um, uh, educating, educating, you know, younger minds. And then others of you, you're constantly helping other people. You're helping so that they can, because you, you see that, you know, they have potential. They just need a little bit of a boost, a little bit of assistance or guidance to get there. So you help. And I also feel like you help your coworkers, even if you don't like your coworkers, if they're stuck with computer issues, if they're stuck um, if they need something proofread, if they, if they're just stuck because, you know, they let the work pile on, if you have an opportunity, you always help. And so the reason I bring this up, and sorry for being so long-winded, is, um, 
what is lying uh, on top of it here is the Ten of Pentacles. And it's in the 12th house. So I usually think of this as divine guidance, divine protection, and really good karma coming home to roost because you have always helped others, okay? So the whole process about, you know, where you are right now, you work really hard to get yourself financially and professionally uh, where you are. Like you're, you're in a good space because of hard work. And I also feel like it's going to continue for you. So if you feel like, oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a winning streak. Is This is so unbelievable. Is it going to go away? It's not going to go away. It's, it's very stable. It's built on a very honorable and a very selfless foundation. And because of that, it's going to sustain the test of time. And so you have further career enrichment and professional enrichment and um, financial expansion that's going to be in store for you. So don't worry, okay? Enjoy the ride. Keep doing as you have been doing and things are really, really, really looking up, okay? Don't fret over this Mercury retrograde uh, period. You're going to be fine. The last message that I, I'm going to leave you guys with um I see an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, or Libra. Give me just a moment. I'm going to pull out an extra card here. So I see an, um, this person. And I feel like this is a person that you are casually dating or you have romantic feelings for. And um, the best way that I can explain this is... Um, the energy exchange between the two of you seems very, very exciting, but something's missing. There's an element here about something missing. Um, let me see. They're trying to... It's almost like, you know, it's, it's an opposites attract type of energy. You're very, very steadfast. And they're very, very um, unpredictable opposites attract you're very very diligent with the things that you do things that you say and for you guys unless you know something to be a fact unless you know something in and out, uh, in and out you find it really really um troublesome to say things without knowing um without having full knowledge of it and then the other person is very careless okay so it's like they, they, they wave knowledge around, but they don't have all the facts. They say things, but they're missing, you know, details. And so there's a, a problematic communication here with this person, this air sign that you're dealing with. If you're dating them, if you're casually seeing them, if you like them, if you're flirting with them, if you're courting them. Um, I also feel this is someone who's really, really, really intelligent has a great education, quite intelligent, but there's something there, and I feel like the energy is very jarring. So it's something that you best leave alone because I don't feel, you know, um, it's going to work out too well. I see an Aquarius. I don't see it working out too well, and I especially feel like the other person is hiding some information. They could be um, holding back information, lying by omission, or just, you know, outright lying. But I, I definitely feel there is a disconnect here, and there is a blockage coming from their end, okay? It's like they're not willing to share the information with you. They're, they're keeping something hidden, okay? I'm going to leave it at that, um, Virgos. It's going to be a good month, and, um, you know, thanks again, you guys, for being understanding, for tuning in, and uh, still being around. I, I really appreciate it. I do wish you all the best, okay? I hope the reading is helpful, and uh, I'm going to try to be on time, and especially, you know, try my best to be early, even. So take care of yourself, all right, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a blessed, wonderful rest of April 2018. Bye-bye.